How do the sacraments become effectual means of salvation? The sacraments become effectual means of salvation, not from any virtue in them, or in him that doth administer them, but only by the blessing of Christ and the working of his spirit in them that by faith receive them. Shorter Catechism, question 91. We now turn from the Word of God uh, to the sacraments. So again, just to review here, when we think of the means of grace, the outward and ordinary means of grace that God has given to us, there are three. There is the Word, there are the sacraments, and thirdly, there is prayer. So we covered the Word under a couple of questions, and now we're dealing with the sacraments. And once again, we're dealing with the question of how they are made uh, effectual how they are made powerful, uh, powerfully effective in the souls of those who receive them. So this question is dealing with how they become an effectual uh, means of grace. And the, the catechism answers in two ways, which is quite helpful. The Bible does this as well. First of all, by telling us uh, what it is not, so the ways that they are not made effectual. So it's first of all making very clear distinctions on what doesn't cause the sacraments to become uh, effectual. And you'll note that the first thing given to us is not any virtue in them. What does that mean? Not any virtue uh, in them. Well, it's, it's speaking about the fact that it is not merely the outward ordinance by itself. And in both of these cases, it is addressing Rome. Roman Catholics, right? Roman Catholic uh, uh, theology. Not any virtue in them. Uh, it means not merely just the outward uh, form. So, for example, in, in Roman Catholic theology, uh, they teach that the sacraments, the physical application or the physical participation in their sacraments infuses grace into the recipient. So the way I like to illustrate this is, um, at least when I was younger, you had Coke machines, right? And we still have Coke machines, but now people use debit cards and other things. We had Coke machines and you'd have to put coins in. So you put coins in and then you hit the button and then the, the, the can of Coca-Cola falls to the bottom and you, you take it out, take it out of the bottom. And that's a, a good illustration of, of Roman Catholic uh, theology with regard to the sacraments. So uh, take the Mass, uh, their perverted, idolatrous version, uh, distortion of the Lord's Supper. They believe that taking the wafer and ingesting it, putting it physically in your mouth and, and swallowing it, gives you grace. That the, the, the bread itself is the physical body transformed into the physical body of the Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore you receive grace into you, yourself as a result of it. And the, and the Catechism is making clear that is not what the Bible teaches. It is not merely outward. People can hear sermons outwardly and not profit from them. We talked about that. It is possible to receive baptism. It is possible to receive the Lord's Supper and to not uh, receive the efficacy of those uh, sacraments. It's not merely going through the outward motion. The second thing is, it is the efficacy is not dependent on uh, the one who administers them. 
not the one who administers them. Right? This is, in the words of the Catechism, in him that doth administer uh, them. And for the Roman Catholics, this would, of course, uh, be the priest. Uh, the priest is the one who uh, makes the uh, sacraments efficacious in him himself. So they believe that the priest is off actually, in the case of the, the mass, the priest is offering a fresh sacrifice. And he has virtue through apostolic succession that comes by that means that gives him authority and power. So only a priest can can make the Latin pronouncement that turns the bread and wine into the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as a representative of uh, the Pope and, uh, and of Christ uh, himself. And this, this has practical implications for us as, as Christians in our, our, our theology. Let's say, for example, you uh, are baptized by a minister of the gospel in some church and then later on, that minister apostatizes. That is to say, he forsakes the Christian faith. Is your baptism, therefore, invalidated? Is your baptism made void? And the answer is no, it is not. You know, if you've received the, the Lord's Supper, the minister had, has, uh, you've had a minister who's served in your congregation and you've received the Lord's Supper with him administering the sacrament, and then later on, you discover that he's not a believer and wasn't a believer. Um, you know, does that somehow take away from the effectual work of the sacrament in your soul over those months or years? And the answer is, is no. So there are people who can be baptized, maybe even in a, a church that's not as thoroughgoing uh, and, and not as biblical as it should be, perhaps more liberal, but they've received uh, Trinitarian baptism, their baptism is still valid and it's still a lawful baptism and it's still legitimate baptism, likewise with the Lord's Supper. So it's not dependent on the person who administers them. Then the catechism turns then and says, okay, well, that's helpful. Now, what is, you know, what is the answer? How, how are the sacraments? How do they become effectual uh, to us? So now we are, we're given the biblical uh, the biblical answer, and you're going to notice here a parallel with what we saw in the ministry of the Word. So the overarching answer is they're made effectual by the blessing of Christ. So there's a, a Christocentric uh, answer here, by the blessing of Christ. So it is by divine power. Uh, the effectual nature of the sacrament is through divine power, not human power, but from Christ him, himself. And then this is, this is brought out in similar ways to what we saw uh, earlier. You'll see both, both parts of what we saw in our uh, exposition of the efficacy of the ministry of the word. There is, on one hand, the working of the Spirit, and with that is working faith in those who receive the uh, sacraments, right? And so it's by, by this means that uh, we have applied to us Christ. So this is, this X is a, a Greek letter for Christos. I'll put up here English. Applied Christ with the benefits of the new covenant. All right. So let's, let's think through this um, a little bit here. It's the working of the Spirit who works faith in those who receive them. 
So just like uh, with the ministry of the word, you have those who the spirit works through that ministry of the word, giving them faith, they believe the word and they profit from it. It's the same with regards to baptism and the Lord's Supper. And it's, uh, so with regards to baptism, and we'll come to this uh, more fully when we get to the question that relates to this, but how is baptism made effectual to the recipient? Well, it's through the ministry of the Holy Spirit working faith in them and they're be able thereby to profit from it. It's the same with regards to the Lord's Supper. So the Lord's Supper, the minister Christ is present in that ordinance by his spirit and the spirit is taking the Christ and uh, all of the benefits of the new covenant and the spirit is applying that to the individual soul. So when we come to the Lord's Supper, how do we feed upon Christ in the Supper? We feed upon Christ in the Supper by faith. We'll talk about this more uh, in, a, in a subsequent uh, question. The spirit is at work in the soul of the uh, Christian at the Lord's table, enabling them to feed upon the Lord Jesus Christ uh, by faith. And so we have to have uh, the, the, the sacraments have to include the ministry of the spirit working faith in the recipient in order for them to be effectual. Well, this underlines the application that we made with regards to the reference of God's word. If the spirit is necessary and if faith is necessary and if faith is a gift of the spirit, then we need to be praying for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You'll often hear your pastor at the Lord's Supper uh, praying for the presence of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the Holy Spirit uh, to accompany that ordinance. You'll always hear it as well with regards to uh, children that are being baptized or for that matter, an adult that's being a uh, newly converted adult who's being baptized. Um, in both cases, the minister will be praying for the, the, the Holy Spirit to come uh, to accompany the ordinance that Christ has appointed in order to bring blessing, in order to bring Christ to us in order to apply to us all that Christ is, all that Christ has done, and thereby all of the benefits that are attached uh, to the new covenant. And so here we see very similar to the ministry of the word that the sacraments, baptism and the Lord's Supper, are made effectual, not, not by a mere outward observance, not by the one who is administering them, but through the working of the Holy Spirit and through the faith that is being exercised in those who receive them. And so it's indispensable. We're thinking about the power, the, uh, the influence, the fruitfulness of the sacraments. We're to think in terms of these biblical categories. So in question 91, how do the sacraments become effectual means of salvation? The sacraments become effectual means of salvation, not from any virtue in them or in him that doth administer them, but only by the blessing of Christ and the working of his spirit in them that by faith receive them. <laughs>